It's me, the little voice in your stomach. And as you can tell by my musical selection, I have impeccable taste. So I won't settle for anything but the most tasty snack. All natural Alberto beef jerky. It's lean beef, slow cooked and seasoned to perfection. All natural and all delicious. So listen to the little voice in your stomach. Indulge my great taste and feed me some all natural Alberto beef jerky. Alberto beef jerky. You get out what you put in. Refers to Alberto's all natural line of beef jerky. Minimally processed, no artificial ingredients. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. All right, a July 5th is here, and we say welcome. Dave Rothenberg in for Stephen A. Hope you had a wonderful 4th of July, and most importantly, a safe 4th of July. I watched a man consume 19 pounds of hot dogs yesterday. I don't know why. You know what that event is like for me? It's like a car wreck. You know when you're on the highway and you're in huge traffic and you're just inching along and then you see the flashing lights up ahead and on the other side of the median, there's a horrendous car accident. And rather than get to where it's the one lane and you just speed along and go, you you pull up to it and you look to your left and you're like, you know, rubbernecking with this gaping mouth of like, oh, my God, that's a terrible accident. I feel so horrible. That, to me, is what the hot dog eating contest is like. I turned it on, and it, I mean, I can't even tell you how repulsive it was. This, um, the, the, this Joey Chestnut fellow is shoveling, I mean, at, at, a, at, a, at an incredible pace, he's shoveling hot dogs into his face he's dipping them in water you get half the hot dog is on his cheek you got bun on his eyebrow you got waters dripping down his arms and his elbows and he's putting them away at a rate of like eight hot dogs a minute he ate 72 hot dogs and the amazing thing to me is the guy's like 152 pounds what do you think you would feel like if you went to a barbecue and you ate 72 hot dogs. I'd be incapacitated for weeks and weeks and weeks. So I, I, it, it is a car wreck moment for me. And I can't not watch it. There's something about it that just draws me in. And it's funny. We were talking about it yesterday on the show. How, what's the prize money for this? Man out in the heat with people cheering. Eat 72 hot dogs. He got buns on his nose. You got water dripping all over the place. How much money does he get? What would you guess? Name a number, 100 grand, 200 grand, 50 grand. You know what he does this all for? $10,000. Now, I'm not saying $10,000 isn't money, but 10000 By the time that's taxed, he's getting what, six grand? I don't know if I would put myself through that. Six grand to eat 72 hot dogs. But if you can, you can. 866-ESPN, 866-729-3776. So let me let you in behind the curtain a little bit. Every day, um, my producers and engineer and everybody, we, there's an email chain that goes around. And today's email chain reads like this. Are you ready to bury the Mets yet? Currently, they're 11 and a half in the division and nine and a half in the wild card back. Now, a DeGrom win tonight could reduce that number by one. Are you kidding me? The Mets have been done for weeks. The Mets have already raised the verbal white towel by saying we, we're open for business. The fire sale is now starting. And sure, they played well out in San Francisco. They played well at home against Philadelphia. The Mets can't compete. The Mets are so far done that I don't even think it's a conversation you can have. So it's funny. I saw that email today and I thought, Am I willing to throw in the towel? I've I've dried off with the towel. I put it in the laundry bin, and it's 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 run through three cycles already. The towel is done. The towel is folded and in the closet, as far as I'm concerned. The Mets, I as a Mets fan, I don't even watch the Mets and get nervous now. You know, typically when your team is very involved, you watch the games and there's stress and there's nerves and what will they do and how will they play and this is so important and if they win two out of three. No. I watch because I'm a Mets fan. I watch because I like the team. I don't watch with any sort of, of concern or nerves or pressure, anything like that. That's what a Yankees fan feels now. Not what a Mets fan. Like, is there a Mets fan out there right now 
that could call me and say, Dave, I, I think you're wrong. I think the Mets are very much involved in this race because to me, that's comical. 866-ESPN, 866-729-3776, and I'm okay with it. Look, I came to grips with it. I know it's a rough year. I know they've been all banged up, and look, it is what it is. So two years ago, they were in the World Series. Last year, they made it into the postseason. This year has been, and, and I blame injuries a lot for it, sure. I don't think they were built well. I don't think that Sandy did a great job putting that bullpen together. I don't know what the Mets are. I know they have good starting pitching, but are they starting pitching in defense? No. Are they starting pitching in in big-time offense? Not really. Are they starting pitching in bullpen? Certainly not. They're really, really good starting pitching when healthy, and a team kind of cobbled together. So I don't necessarily think that Sandy has done a great job. I think Sandy's he's been okay. He's been okay. Not, nothing sensational. Conforto's had a really nice year, but, you know, am I willing to r- r- raise the, the white towel and throw it in? Oh, my God. That, that towel is done. Done. And then the Yankees. You know, I said when the Yankees fell two games behind the Blue Jays, uh, behind the Red Sox, I'm sorry, I, I think you have to have serious concern about this team. Guys, the Yankees started out 21-9. and nine. Yankees were rolling. You looked at them and you thought, how good are they? Like, not are they going to make the playoffs, but will they win the division or will they kind of sneak their way in as a wild card? Right now, to be honest with you, the Yankees are, they're hemorrhaging. You know, Sabathia certainly wasn't great yesterday, but they allowed four runs. They couldn't score off Hap. They couldn't get to that relief staff. And Yankees, who started out 12 games over, 12 games over, are now six games over, a game and a half ahead of Tampa. And you've got Kansas City that's two games in the loss back. You've got Minnesota that's two games in the loss back. So this team that... A month ago, you looked at and you said, the Yankees are clearly going to the postseason. I I don't know how you could feel like that now. I think you have to be very, very concerned. Now, CeCe came back, but he went two and two-thirds yesterday. So, to me, every time they pitch well, they played bad baseball. From the moment they went to the West Coast till now, they've played bad baseball. They were bad in Oakland. They played two bad series against uh, against the Angels. They had a bad series against the Rangers. They they have played poorly. And, you know, is this what they are? Are they just a mediocre team? They were 21-9. They were rolling away. They were 12 games over. And since that 30-game start, they have played six games under 500. And the Yankees get going in just a couple of moments um, at the stadium against the Blue Jays yet again. So, you know, you say these are not must-win, and they're not must-win games, but you kind of have to find a way to win. You're four games behind Boston now. And not only are you four games behind Boston, but David Price threw a gem last night. Chris Sale is, you know, Chris Sale is at this point a clear number one stopper. And let's be honest. Can you honestly sit here and tell me that, that the Boston Red Sox aren't clearly, clearly better than the Yankees? Because you know what the truth is? They are. And even the most ardent, diehard Yankees fan, I don't think can dispute that. Do I think the Yankees have a chance to get into the postseason? Sure. Do I expect it? I don't expect it. Do I think they're going to win this division? No. No, I think that ship has sailed. They're four games out. And they're not better than Boston. You say you're four games out. You've got half a season. You'll get healthier. You'll get to the second half of the year. And it's all going to change. But what's going to change? Boston's still a better team. Boston still has a better starting staff, and Boston's still going to go out and make a move to strengthen themselves for the second half of the season. So you got the Mets and the Yankees. Mets are done. Yankees are, as we say, hemorrhaging right now. 866-ESPN, 866-729-3776. It was funny. I'm on the air yesterday, and the story broke from our Chris Haynes that Gordon Hayward has inked a deal with the Celtics. So I reported on the air. And then Woj came out and said, not so fast. I don't think it's done yet. So we we reported that, but you have to believe. And then it turned into this whole saga of Hayward is not going to announce and he's not sure and it's uncertain. It could be Miami, could be Utah, got to meet with Utah. And at the end of the day, Chris Haynes was right. He goes to Boston. So now I think what happens is Boston goes from in that second tier in the East to clearly the second team in the East. And I like what Boston has done, and I'll I'll explain what I like about it so much. Cleveland's better. 
even with Hayward, even if Tatum is good, even with Jalen Brown, even with Isaiah Thomas and Jay Crowder and all those guys, and I think Boston is a good team, and I, and I love Ainge, and I love Brad Stevens. Cleveland's better, and there's one reason why they're better, because LeBron James, in, in, in any situation, makes you, for the most part, the better team. All right, not against Golden State because they're historically great, but otherwise, he pretty much turns you in to the better team. But LeBron is 32 years old now. And how much time does LeBron have left at this level? Three years, maybe? So in three years, Hayward will be 30. Tatum will be 22. Brown will be 23. Isaiah Thomas, if he's still there, will be 30. Brad Stevens will still be there. They are looking for the future to be a team that can win that whole thing. And in the present, I think they have made themselves clearly clearly the number two team in the Eastern Conference. And as we roll along with free agency, I ask you this. Do the Knicks know that free agency has started? Like, are, are the Knicks, whoever's running the Knicks, be it Steve Mills or, or James Dolan or if Alan Houston is involved in these decisions or Jeff Warner, whoever it is, do they know that on July 1, in fact, free agency, it did, it started. Free agency is here. And it kind of feels like, and Mark Berman of the Post had a really interesting article, that the Knicks may go into this season and pull a Philadelphia 76ers. Play for Porter. Michael Porter, kid going to Missouri this year. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Yankees already in the hole. Down one nothing to the Blue Jays. Uh, awful run, as a matter of fact. Man on first, Justin Smoke comes to the plate, hits one kind of yeah, to the right of Ellsbury, goes over, bobbles it, misplays it. Bautista from first on a single scores, and Justin Smoke uh, moves up to second. So one nothing, top one, Pineda on the mound against, um, I think, Aaron Sanchez for the Blue Jays. So, again, you, you don't look at this game on July 5th and say Yankees have to win it. But at what point, how many games can you fall behind Boston before you sit here and say that they're not coming back? I mean, they're four games behind the Red Sox right now. Is, is the number five? Is the number six? I mean, I don't think they come back from four. I mean, let's be honest. Do you think the Yankees ever see first place again? Be, I mean, being honest about it. I'm not saying you don't want it. You want to get red hot. Maybe make a move. You improve the starting pitching. But do you realistically expect the Yankees? to ever see first place again this season? I don't. They're four games behind a team, and that team is better than they are. And you know the Red Dombrowski and the Red Sox are going to do something at the deadline, which is only uh, three weeks away, three and a half weeks away. All right, 866-ESPN, 866-729-3776. You know, we haven't really had this conversation because Knicks fans don't almost don't know how to feel. But Mark Berman of the Post had a really interesting article, and it was it, it kind of feels like the Knicks are they're not doing anything. You know, they're, they're, I guess they've expressed a little interest in Dion Waiters. If they sign him, I mean, he's, he's fine. If his head is in the game, he's a fine player. But, you know, we've had this conversation with Jets fans, and I, I kind of want to pose it to the Knicks fan. If the Knicks wave the white flag, if the Knicks come out and say, you know what, we, we, we are not going to really put a very competitive team on the court this year, you're going to get to see Neil Aquina. You're going to see a club that has run through Kristaps Porzingis. We'll you know, get as much as we can out of Joe Kim Noah. But we are going to play the same game that the 76ers have played for a couple of years, and that is we are going to be bad, play some of the young guys, deal off some of these high-priced salaries, have money, and try to go for it in that aspect. I, I wonder if the Knicks fan, I wonder if you would, would stand up and say, you know what, Dave, I'm, I'm okay with that. I can buy into that. I would do it. 866-ESPN. I would do it. You know why? Because honestly, I don't have, have the trust that they can take the pieces that they have now and flip them and, and turn them into a competitive team. I don't even know who's running this club right now. I, I guess it's Steve Mills. Is he going to be a guy that's running it in six months, eight months, one year? I don't know. So, yeah, I would do that. Because this kid, Michael Porter, who's going to the University of Missouri, is supposed to be an absolute star player. So if I can give myself the best possible chance to land him, it's hard to mess that up. Like, even if you're the Knicks and LeBron James was available or Kyrie Irving was available in your draft, it's hard, even if you don't have full confidence in the front office, 
to mess that up. You know, like if you have the number one pick and Michael Porter is what we believe he is and he has a sensational year at Missouri, which he probably will. It's hard to mess that up, even if you're not a, a brilliantly, you know, even if you're not Danny Ainge run. It's hard to mess that up. So I guess the question is, because the Jets are doing it, if the Knicks followed suit and they decided instead of going for 35 and and whatever, 35 and whatever that equals to 82, 47, would you would you be okay with that? Marco Estrada, by the way, on the on the mound for the uh, Blue Jays. Would you be okay with that? I, I would I would be okay with it. I, I would sign on for that. I'd be comfortable. I don't know if you would, but not knowing how they're being run, who's running them, what the real plan is. If they said that's what we're going to do, you're going to see Neil Aquina for 25 minutes a game. The offense is going to be run through Kristaps Porzingis. Uh, we're going to trade off all our high, high-priced talent, and we're going to now build through the draft and, and, and around these young kids. Sign me up. I would do it. I would do it. Anthony Long Island. Anthony, you're on ESPN Radio. Oh, hi. Um, hi, Dave. Um, hi, Anthony. First-time caller. I am a huge fan of yours. Um, I'm a college student, and I'm listening to your show at night. just helps me get through a long week when I have a lot of papers to write, um, tests to study for, so I, I really appreciate that. Well, the, your words so, are very kind. Thank you. Uh, yeah, well, I, I mean them all. So um, I'm a Utah Jazz fan. Um, I know I'm a New Yorker, so it kind of doesn't make how, sense. How did, that, how did that happen? Well, um, my family doesn't really have an NBA team. Like, we have St. John's um, as our basketball team. Well, I'm a lifelong Yankees-Giants fan, so NBA, I kind of just picked a team I liked. And I really, really like what the Utah Jazz were building. They had a 51-win season last year. And with Gobert and Hayward, I just really liked all their pieces and how they were coming together. And I looked they were something special for the future. So I have a two-part question about Hayward's uh, decision to leave and go yep. to the Celtics. Okay. So my first part is, um, as a Utah Jazz fan, I do feel like he betrayed us and betrayed our fan base. But, how, um, Anthony, well, before we get to your second question, how did he betray you? Like, what, what did he, he – he was a free agent, and he signed with another team. I understand you being frustrated and annoyed and not wanting to see him succeed even, but how did he betray the Jazz organization? Well, um, the Jazz developed him. He was very raw as a rookie and as a second-year player. But um, last year, he made a huge leap. And um, when Quinn Snyder arrived, the team started to be run through him. And I just think when he started getting the ball, the team just be- the team just became really good. And last year, I saw they had a lot of potential. I know they got swept by the Warriors, but I saw they had potential to be a maybe a three seed or maybe even a two seed. In the West I, I, all those year. things are true, Anthony. I, I think that he, he spent the the young part of his career there. He played well for Quinn Snyder. He had a terrific season. I agree with that. You're, you're not wrong. But, I, you know, look, as a, as a neutral observer here, and you have you have a skin in the game. I have nothing. I don't, I don't see that he betrayed the Jazz organization. You may not like it. You may not like the, the way the NBA is formatted that he can pick up and leave, but th- this is what he wanted to do. I mean, Anthony, it, it, when you yeah. start working, you're in college, and when you start working, if you start at Company A and they groom you and they see the, the flaws and they deal with you and they groom you and they, and they show you the ways of business and then you up and you leave for another company, have you betrayed them? No, but um, the thing with Hayward is that I was reading his Players' Tribune article and it was a very well-written article, but I also read Players' Tribune articles by other players that have made um, big free agent decisions. So I read Kyle Lowry's article and Kyle Lowry's article pretty much said that he signed, we signed with the Raptors after a lot of commotion that he would go out west and go to a, go to an, uh, a better team. Uh, he's re signed with the Raptors because he wanted to finish what he started. And he was. And, and that, Anthony, I got to run. And I understand your point. That's Kyle Lowry. And if that works for Kyle Lowry, then good for him. And thanks for the phone call. That's not what Gordon Hayward wanted to do. So look, if I was a Jazz fan, would I, would I be annoyed? Yeah, I'd be annoyed. But as someone who is completely, completely neutral, I mean, what he did is is there's nothing wrong with it. He hasn't, you know, violated some kind of uh, clause in the CBA. He went to a team, and and how about this? You you want to go through the brutality of what the Western Conference offers, or you want to go through the East and I mean, certainly have a chance at the number one seed, and 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 if you have a decent year, you're in the Eastern Conference Finals again, and maybe you run past Cleveland. If something goes well. No, I, I don't have an issue with it. Actually, I kind of like it. 
I think it changes the balance a little bit now in the NBA. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! As a Mets fan, I, I have nothing. Now, I'll watch my team. I'll, I'll hope they win. It doesn't really impact my day-in, day-out business. What I have now, and tell me if this is abnormal, my entire baseball life is, you know, quietly watching the Mets and actively watching the Yankees and rooting against them. Like, I am all about rooting against the Yankees. I will watch the game. I will be vocal about it. I hope that they lose. I am excited to watch Yankee games in anticipation of them losing. And, and people say, well, that's, that's, that's ridiculous. That's very strange. Why is that strange? It gives me a passion about baseball. So I ask you, is, is that an odd way of conducting yourself? I do the same thing in the NFL. Giants winning, that's my number one. Cowboys, Eagles, Redskins losing, that's my number two. I don't think there's anything wrong with being someone who enjoys sports and roots for your teams. And then when your teams either aren't relevant or even if they are, you're passionate about uh, against rooting against other clubs. That uh, maybe, maybe I'm in the minority. Maybe you don't get it. That's how I am. I don't think it's that distinctly unusual, though. I wouldn't be surprised if you guys were listening. You're like, yeah, I'm a Yankees fan. I don't like the Mets. I'm a Rangers fan. I don't like the Islanders. Rangers are my team. Watching the Islanders lose is secondary. So I am all about my team winning and then teams I don't like losing. One and 1A. 866-ESPN, 866-729-3776. If there's a story, we'll get into it in about 10 minutes, where if it had happened in a, in a more mainstream sport, it would be leading every single sports talk show in the world today and i have the audio to prove it we'll get to that in a couple moments 866-ESPN let's go to randy randy wants to talk nba what's up randy not much man i've been seeing a lot of utah fans comparing what hayward did to kevin durant and they're completely different i just want jazz fans to know hayward's not a top five player he's not even top five at his position and boston did not beat them in the conference finals when Hayward decided to choke off the last three games. That's all oh, I, 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 I don't, I don't think understand. it's common. And, and Hayward didn't go to, to the team that exactly. is, is the best team is the best team in the NBA either. Randy. Exactly. Yeah. I, so, I agree with you. I, I mean, look, I get it. Thanks to the goal from the jazz standpoint, they're frustrated. They're annoyed. They're hurt. They feel like a second class citizen. I understand all those things. But what Gordon Hayward did is, is he didn't do anything wrong. He didn't. He wanted to up and leave. He up and left, and that's his decision. What he did in comparison to what Durant did for my money are completely, completely different. Spike in Jersey. Spike, you're on ESPN, my man. Good uh, morning. Hope you had a good fourth yesterday. Always a pleasure to hear the man I uh, wait to listen to. Uh, Gordon Hay was a terrific young player. Uh, his coach, uh, he went back to his college coach. He yep. was a terrific young coach. Really terrific calling out of bounds plays and keeping six, 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 seven guys playing all positions. Problem the Celtics have, and I feel the way about the Celtics the way you do <clears throat> about the Yankees being a diehard Nick fan. Uh, problem with the Celtics is uh, their main score, you can't keep them on the floor at the end of the game. You saw that last year when Banks came on the floor, I believe. So this is it. Hey, we'll improve them, but they're not going to beat Cleveland. No. Cleveland stayed pat, but I want to get to the, the, the question you put out there. The Knicks could win 16 games this year. And as a lifetime Nick fan who bleeds orange and blue, the guys will dive on the floor, play hard. That's all I want to see. Don't spend a thin dime. All right, so Whoever's Spike, Spike and obviously with the lottery, it's, it's different than other sports. But you're going to give me 16 wins, right. most ping pong balls. Let's yeah. go. Yeah? yeah? And play hard, play the kids. I don't want to sh- see retreaded players. And, Dave, I'm going to tell you something. I think we know you're in every Garden game during the week and all that stuff. Whoever's listening doesn't know it. That's the story. And you know the crowd, say, 20% concierge people and hotel and tourists. I don't care. The place will be packed. Play hard. The crowd will go crazy if a young kid dives for the ball. Am I right? The, the place, and Spike, thanks to the phone call, is always packed. I go to the Garden, 
And I walk all over the place because I got to go down for, for post-game interviews and I'm on the court before and then I'm up in the radio booth during. It is all, I, I, it is always a buzz. It's always crowded. There's always people that are excited to go there. Yeah, I, I 100% agree with you. Kev Ark tweets to me. I think I actually enjoy the Steelers losing more than I do the Bengals winning. I, I mean, I'm telling you, when the, the Giants lost to the Packers last year, 38-13, I think the score was in the playoffs, and it pained me, and it took a couple days to recover, and then I was all in on the Packers because they were playing the Cowboys. When they beat the Cowboys, it's like the world settled for me. It, it just uh, Everything was much more comfortable. I didn't have to worry about Dallas going to a Super Bowl and all the stress that goes along with that. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. We talk about, you know, would you do this for this amount of money? If you offered me right now, Dave, here's $20,000 cash. Cowboys win the Super Bowl. I would push it right back at you. I would want absolutely no part of it. None. None. I don't know what that number would be. I mean, you could probably get there, but you'd have to go into the six digits to get to get there for me to agree to the Cowboys winning the Super Bowl. And maybe that's weird. And that's fine. That's me. 866 espn 866-729-3776. Dave is on ESPN Radio. What's up, Dave? You're a nut job, Dave. You're nuts. Yeah, but we, but we know this. <laughs> You're nuts. <laughs> Listen, I got to get on you because yesterday you had the gall, the nerve, to say that Carmelo Anthony should be taking um, Courtney Lee and Aaron Flalo to the playoffs as if those two are any type of decent players. But, I mean, but he's had Porzingis. The... He's had Lopez. Uh, Porzingis, yes, you're true. Porzingis, I mean, come on. Yes. You don't, you think, and I never said anything about winning playoff series or going to the Eastern Conference Finals. Yes, I believe that g- given the way the Knicks were constituted last year, that Carmelo Anthony, if he's this terrific player like everyone seems to think, should have them competing last week of the season for a playoff spot. Yes. But, Dave, think about it. When he was with the Nuggets, he never missed the playoffs. Literally since the first year he came into the league in 03. In the Western Conference, which was strong back then, too. The Spurs were good. The Lakers were better. He never missed the playoffs until he came to the Knicks. Dave, do you know know how much him leading the Nuggets to the postseason matters to me? (laughs) No, uh, No, none. None. I, I I don't care. I have no interest. It doesn't move the needle. It does not matter to me. The one place where I wanted him to succeed was with my team, with the Knicks. And I'm going to ask you, if I would have told you that Carmelo Anthony would have had the exact Knicks career, assuming he's not going to play anymore, that he has, would you have signed for that when they made the trade from Denver? No, but you can't put it on him. You can't put the whole thing on him. Listen, his first year here, Amari Stoudemire gets hurt. Never was the same player again. He can't, totally agree. He can't control that. Totally, but he but my point that. is, everyone looks at Carmelo Anthony, and and what else I said yesterday, and thanks for the call, Dave, is that in my mind, Carmelo Anthony is not a top thirty player. And people would, oh, he, you think he's better? He, he's not better than Paul George? No, he's not better than Paul George. He's not better than Rudy Gobert. He's not better. He's not better than Kyrie Irving. I mean, the list is Antenna Kupo, LeBron James, you, Anthony Davis, Demarcus Cousins. The list is is. I, if you were drafting right now. You think you draft Devin Booker or you draft Carmelo Anthony? Carmelo Anthony, right now, if you were to have an NBA draft and everyone from this league was available, it would probably go like 45 to 60. And I'm not saying that Carmelo Anthony can't still score. But this belief and this notion that Melo is a player that makes other guys better and has some star quality, and you put him on a team and all of a sudden they, they jump up 8 or 10 or 12 games, I just I don't believe it to be true. He's been here for an extended period of time, and outside of one year, one year, the Knicks were extremely unimpressive. And I think, I mean, a large portion of that goes on Carmelo Anthony. And I'm not saying go to the NBA Finals. I'm not saying you're going to go seven games with LeBron in the East. But you can't get to the 1st of April and have a chance at the postseason with Melo Rose, Noah, Porzingis, Lee, Hernan Gomez? No. Not a, not, a, not a whiff? Not a chance? That, to me, is frustrating. Daddy, where do babies come from? Uh... 
Well, uh, honey. Mommy went to the store. Oh, well, you see, um, well, there's a mommy and a daddy, right? Right. And see, when they call Geico, uh, they could save a bunch of money on car insurance. Oh, really? And that makes them happy? Yes, that makes them very happy. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we could have this talk, Sunshine. <laughs> Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it. So I'm a big tennis guy, and I'll, I'll like I was watching um, earlier today. Venus Williams is playing. Like I, I love it. I used to play tennis, and and I'm a big tennis guy. And usually, you know, and especially this is this is the. I mean, Wimbledon is, it doesn't get bigger than Wimbledon. This is not, you know, something in Scottsdale, Arizona leading up to the U.S. Open. This is not like the, the Hartford tournament in, in, later in August. This is this is Wimbledon. This is the, and this is game seven of the NBA Finals. So yesterday, 24-year-old Bernard Tomic, Tomic, I don't know how you even say the name, right, said that, <clears throat> excuse me, quote, he was bored and couldn't find the motivation during his straight set defeat to Misha Zverev at Wimbledon, who's the world number 30, was an hour and 19 minutes, and Tomic went down 6-4, 6-3, 6-4, and just looked like he didn't care. So you think, you know, maybe he wasn't feeling well. Maybe he wasn't 100% physically. Maybe he had something going on that, you know, occupied his thoughts. If you're trying to defend... Bernard Tomic, listen to what he said after his convincing loss yesterday in an hour and 19 minutes. No, I wasn't mentally and physically there with my uh, with my mental state to perform, and uh, I don't know why, but uh, you know, I felt a little bit bored out there. So, you know, to be completely honest with you, if you ask Federer to give back 500 million dollars, would you would you do that or not? Well, you were just saying you were bored out there. Well, we all work for money at 34, maybe. I can donate to charity, but if you ask Roger if you'll do it, I'll do it. You have to respect the sport, um, but I think I don't respect it enough. Yes, because I, you can say, super talented. Holding a trophy or you know, doing well though, it's not going, doesn't satisfy me anymore. Like, it just, it's not there. I couldn't care less if I make a fourth round U.S. Open or I lose first round. To me, everything's the same, and. Uh, you know, I know I'm going to play another 10 years, and uh, I know after my career I won't have to work again. So for me, this is mental. You know how awful that is? And, and there's no way that I'm the only one that hears that and thinks that. This is a guy who doesn't care. First round U.S. Open, fourth round Wimbledon. It has. I, I mean, there are guys that would kill, that would take time off their life to go to a Wimbledon semifinal. This is a he, – and now he's been pro since he's 15 also. And he's a pretty good player and a talented player. Oh, this, I, I hear those quotes and I see in big letters on my screen in front of me, Bernard Tomic says he felt bored, couldn't find motivation. Winning matches means nothing. To, this is a job for him. It's so sad. It really is. I mean, there are guys, you know, a mile below the surface of the earth right now digging coal. That, that's a job. This is, ten, this is supposed to be fun. This is supposed to be something that drives you to be better. Not with this guy. Just work. Just work. Unbelievable. Could you imagine if an athlete came out and said, like like a professional athlete in a major team sport came out and said that? You, He would be crucified. Imagine if Eli Manning came out and said, look, I'm getting, I'm getting $22 million a year. I don't care about winning. It doesn't motivate me. I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't think you can keep him on a team. I think if you're the Giants, you'd have to do everything immediately just to say we got to move on. We we have to move on. Now, it's one thing to feel that way, which is certainly not good. But to feel that way, to play like that, and to say that, it does not get – I'm not exaggerating. That is so bothersome because me and, – and I know there are a lot of people out there like me – that you care so much about your teams and you care so much about your sports – and if your team or your player, whoever loses, you can't sleep at night. And here's a guy telling you, I don't care. What does it matter to me? I go out, I win, I win. I go out, I lose, I lose. Paycheck's going to clear. Don't care. Oh, that is the worst. Ben in Brooklyn. Ben, you're on ESPN Radio. Hey, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. I you got, got a it. Point earlier, I know the tennis point was amazing. I, I would love to comment on that, but I called about the rooting interest and something on Carmelo. I think what you said before was an amazing idea. I think leagues should promote 
teams that you root against. I, I don't get your point with the Yankees and Mets because they're in different leagues. But like the Cowboys, you know, Giants, Cowboys, Redskins, it, 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 that'd be amazing. Your team's out of it, but you have another team. It doesn't even have to be a division team. It could be like, you know, I'm a Jets fan, and then I just, I just hate the Falcons. I don't know why, you know. And for, like, your, your father hated the Falcons, and you hate the Falcons, and your son hates the Falcons. And it becomes because. But how how are they going to? I don't understand. I'm all about rooting against teams, but how do you promote that, Ben? I, I don't I don't follow that logic. Because I mean, right? I guess it's the, it's it's the because the the whole idea of being a fan is it's it's like it's just an emotional investment. You, it's like it's like your life almost. The people who they're watching every game and. And so I get I that, should, and, I, and I'm know, all I about that. I'm all so about right. rooting against teams that I don't like, but I, I don't understand how you, you turn that into, like, like promoting that. If, as an individual, I think that you attack games like that. Like, I, when the, when the Cowboys are playing the Packers in that playoff game, I was passionate, I was right. emotional, I was pacing around my living room. I really wanted them to lose. But, but I, I don't understand what you're saying about t- leagues need to promote that. Meaning it gets people, it gets because it gets people to watch those games and be interested in those games that they really would have no you interest in. But you in. can't promote can't that negativity. What, what do you What do you want? Like NBC to have a commercial? Watch the Cowboys, Packers, and we can all root against Dallas together. I mean, that doesn't make any sense, Ben. You know, and thanks to the goal, you root against Dallas. You don't want to see them do well. You root against the Yankees. Whoever you root against, that's fine. Totally, one hundred percent fine. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 80 and the ESPN app. It's all pro, tight end, Rob Gronkowski. And nothing fuels my patented Gronk Spike like all natural Alberto beef jerky. Lean beef, slow cooked, and seasoned to perfection. It's all natural and all delicious. Don't take a chance with some wimpy snack. Go with protein-packed, all-natural, Alberto Beef Jerky. Alberto Beef Jerky. You get out what you put in. Refer to Alberto's all-natural line of beef jerky. Minimally processed, no artificial ingredients. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. Hey, for all to bring in for Stephen A. ESPN Radio, ESPN app. Do you realize that we are spending very important time together? That, if you listen very closely... You can you can hear the collapse of the Yankees taking place right before your very eyes and ears. Since we last spoke about six minutes ago, Justin Smoke, two run homer, Kendry's Morales, solo homer, Yankees down four nothing top three at Yankee Stadium. Like it's a team that is not even very good in Toronto. That to me is one of the most concerning things about this entire Yankees streak of how bad it's been. You're losing to bad teams. Now, Houston is very good, but they split against the White Sox. They got beaten up by the A's. They lost four out of six to the Angels. Unless they come back today, they're going to lose a series at home against the Blue Jays. You cannot have that happen if you're the Yankees. And again, they have seven innings to try and come back, but you don't feel good about it as a Yankees fan. And, and, And here's an interesting story. Um, Gary Sanchez was invited into the home run derby along with, uh, Cody Bellinger and his dad's going to pitch to him, which should be nice. Um, along with, uh, I almost said Mike John Carlos Stanton will be here and Aaron judge is going to be there. So, so the biggest names that you would want are going to be there. And Gary Sanchez, who was so good last year and has been good this year. He's just hurt and he had a little bit of a slow start, but he's, I mean, as a catcher, he's a terrific player. So he was asked to uh, compete in the home run derby and Logan Morrison, who's having a big year for the Rays. I think he's got 24 home runs now was asked about that. And he held no punches. Listen to this. Logan Morrison commenting on Gary Sanchez getting invited and accepting the invitation to the Home Run Derby. Gary shouldn't be there. Gary's a great player, but he shouldn't be in the Home Run Derby. And I remember when I had 14 home runs like a month and a half ago. I mean, that that's a shot. You don't typically get players that are saying that to other players. That's a shot at Gary Sanchez. Who would you rather see? Now, there's no doubt that Logan Morrison, as of right now, is a bigger home run hitter than Gary Sanchez. But who is bigger star power-wise, Gary Sanchez or Logan Morrison? Do you have any idea, really, who Logan Morrison is? 
Like, like if Logan Morrison was lined up with five other Major League Baseball players, do you think you could pick this gentleman out of a lineup? I believe that you couldn't. And it, it's strange to me that he would come out and make a statement. like I mean, that's that's really aggressive and, and very negative to Gary Sanchez. I, I, I mean, I kind of love it. Because it's a guy saying, you know, the opposite of Bernard Tomich, who we just discussed, saying, I don't care. I, I win, great. I lose, great. I don't care about I, I don't care about it. It does nothing for me. You get a guy coming out and saying, I, I should be there. I had 14 home runs or 13 home runs a, a month and a half ago or six weeks ago. Do, what do, you, do you consider like a month and a half to be six weeks? Because a month has more than 30 days, and I think it becomes difficult. But if I said, what's a month from tomorrow? You would say August 6th. So if I said, what's four weeks from tomorrow, that's August 3rd. So four weeks from tomorrow, guys, is the start of the NFL season. That Hall of Fame game, and I don't know why, but that Hall of Fame game is on a Thursday night this week. Uh, Maybe to make it prime. I don't know why, to be honest with you. Prime time during the week, Cowboys are involved. But uh, honestly, I I, I don't know. I'm sure there is a reason. I'm not sure what the reason is. 866-ESPN, 866-729-3776. And we're going to revisit something that I I said yesterday, which got people crazy. And I want to reiterate it because I I really do believe it. I'm not saying it for for effect. I'm not saying it to try and get people angry or or upset. I'm saying it because I really, really believe it. And it's, it's amazing to me that so many people are on the other side of this discussion. We'll get there in about five minutes. Uh, Andrew and Nyack. Andrew, you're on ESPN Radio. So, Dave, I, I'm an Eagles fan who lives in New York, and I got a pretty tough time. So whenever the Knicks play, because I'm also a Mavericks fan, and all of my friends are Knicks fans, even if they're Jets or Giant fans, I couldn't be happier every time they lose. The fact that they are terrible right now is probably one of my favorite things. Just rooting against them is what I watch NBA for in New York. That's what I do. So but you you gain them. a lot of terrific satisfaction. Oh my god! With with with, so with the Knicks losing. Do you well think about how much stuff I get as an Eagle fan against Giant fans. It's god awful, especially with you guys winning twice, and I have none. So that's my thing. Jet fans also say Eagles. How many wins the Eagles have? None. So I can go to my Mavericks right now. They at least got one in 2010. And I love. How are you an yeah, Eagles yeah, Mavericks news. fan, by the way? Well, <laughs> well, I'm an Eagles Flyers fan because my cousins are from Philly, so I used to watch football and hockey with them. And then uh, I was a dirt guy and Nash with Finley back in the day. That was the crew. That was the good crew to watch. So, so you've been a Mavericks. How, how old are you? I'm only 25. All right. So you've been a, you've been an NBA fan for about 10, 12 years. Right. Exactly. Around right. Dirk, when Dirk came in in '99, and that's just what I, you know. But but you're sticking by them. Like you are locked in as a Mavericks fan. I am locked in. As so a when Dirk fan. retires, you're not going to up and and, yeah. and say, "Oh, Markel Fultz is really a great player. I'm going to root for the 76ers." No, I don't know. I I'm just I'm a Mavericks fan because I was just big on Dirk and I stuck with him. And I that's fine. Him, Look, I, I don't care how you pick your team, Andrew. But you have to stay with the Mavericks. So I don't want you calling me oh in four God. years and saying, you know, I'm done with the Mavericks. I don't I don't like the direction of the team. I, I think I'm going to root for for A, B, or C. No, you can't do that. Okay. Well, the Dennis Smith Jr. thing was great, too, because the Knicks could have got him, but I think that he's going to be a steal for the Mavericks. He very well might be, and uh, and, and Seth Curry's turned into a nice player as well. Andrew, good stuff. I appreciate it. 866-ESPN, 866-729-3776. Mustafa is on ESPN Radio. What's up, my man? I'm doing good, brother. Hopefully you, had, you enjoyed your day yesterday. I did. Um, I, had, I played football yesterday. Nice, man. It's it also my birthday today, too, so it's a double double great day for me. Happy birthday, back. Mustafa. Thank you very much, man. But anyways, with this NBA crazy stuff going on, I'm hearing Marc Gasol might actually go to the Celtics now that Gordon Hayward is, is officially signed on the team. Yeah, but if you're the Memphis, Celtics, why would you deal Marc Gasol? Yeah, because you have no chance in the Western Conference. Zach Randolph is gone. The Western Conference just got that much better. So you, but you, so you just give rebuild. up then? Not give up, looking to just rebuild and start start from scratch again. Because you have no shot. The, all these other teams' Western Conference got way better than, than last year. I right? Look, I, they have no shot, but they didn't have a shot last year. Yeah, but at least they had some of their core intact. I mean, Zach Randolph is gone, and that was a huge uh, era of, of that team. He's, he's been their centerpiece for so long. You know what I mean? So if, if he goes to Boston, Marcus Gasol, 
that would be. I think they'd be able to challenge Cleveland in some way. I agree I with you. If you if you have Gasol, Tatum, Jalen Brown, Gordon Hayward, Isaiah Thomas. Now you have to figure they're going to trade some of those. So maybe Jay Crowder or or Avery Bradley or Marcus Smart. Like, but I agree with you. If if your core is that, I think that you you absolutely compete. I, with, with Cleveland. I, I think you're now again, I'd still take Cleveland because I'm still going to take LeBron James over anybody else in a series, which I think is close. But I, I think you're you have two teams now that are very comparable talent wise. Because if you're a, a superstar in the NBA, it's good to go east because the only real challenge is LeBron right now in the Cavs. Totally agree. The, the Western, because the, the parity in the NBA between the West and the East is a major difference right now. Hundred percent. I, I mean, look, I agree with you. If you had to rank, and thanks to the call, Mustafa, if you had to rank the top players in the NBA, how many are in the East after LeBron, who's number one? How many are in the East? I mean, Gordon Hayward is he top? I don't think he's top fifteen. Kyrie Irving is he? Is he top fifteen? He's probably right around there. Kawhi Leonard, West, Curry, West, Westbrook, West, Harden, West, Durant, West, Anthony Davis, West. I'd say that Kupo is, is maybe, uh, is he top 15? I don't know. So here's what we did yesterday. I just want to kind of recycle this a little bit because um, I want to give other people a chance to chime in and to, to get involved in this conversation. I, I was talking about Carmelo and people, you know, he's so good and he's underrated. He doesn't give the, the, get the credit he deserves. I said, guys. I don't think Carmelo Anthony, and, and, and I'm being fair, is a top 30 player in the NBA right now. And people went bananas. Don't you understand the game? And someone called and said, um, Draymond Green is, is nowhere near LeBron James, um, uh, um, Carmelo Anthony. I said, wait a minute, you don't, you don't think that Draymond Green, if you were to draft these guys, if you were to draft right now, you open up the entire NBA. The entire NBA is available. Where, where do you honestly think Carmelo Anthony goes? On like where where do you honestly think Carmelo Anthony goes? He's not better than Damian Lillard. He's not better than than uh, than Marcus Saul. He's not better than Paul George. He's not better than Kyle Lowry or Draymond Green. I, not to me, he's not. I'd put if you're if you're dra- I mean if you're starting it, and age is a factor. You, you're not taking him over Devin Booker. You're not taking him over Antetokounmpo. And this is not a let's, you know what, all over Carmelo. I mean, I, I'm trying to be honest. I do not believe that Carmelo Anthony is a top 30 player in the NBA right now. I think he's a specialized player where he can score. I don't think he makes other players better. I don't think he's a plus defender. I don't think he's a plus passer. I don't think he's a plus rebounder. I don't think he's a plus leader. I don't think he's a plus teammate. I think that Carmelo Anthony at this stage of his career is a one-dimensional player. And that dimension is he can score. And that's it. And that's it. But to say that Draymond Green, I would take Draymond. If I was starting a team, I would take Draymond Green every single day of the week. So you can argue all you want, but I want to throw it out there today. 866-ESPN. For my money, and I'm not saying that Carmelo doesn't have value, but if he has as much value as everybody seems to think he has, then why, why, why is he still a member of the Knicks? Why isn't he unloaded? Why aren't teams clamoring over this guy? If he's a top 10 or 12 or 15 player in the NBA, why? Now, there's two different ways you could attack this. You say Carmelo Anthony. Oh, and, and by the way, Kevin Pillar. That's two L's if you're scoring at home. Just hit a home run the other way. Five, nothing, Blue Jays. There's three ways to attack this situation, though, with Carmelo Anthony. You can say age is an issue. Open up the entire NBA. Or if it's for one year. Now, if it's for one year, I think you can make the argument that he's in that 30-ish range. If you're drafting the entire NBA and age is an issue, I don't think he's top 45. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Yankees down 5 nothing, top four. Uh, Michael Pineda lasts only three innings, and that's on the heels of, uh, what, two and a third yesterday, two and two-thirds yesterday from CC. So the uh, Yankees' pen is going to have to be very, very active. And, you know, no game tomorrow for the Yanks, but I, I, you have to be just very, very concerned right now about what's going on with this team. Their starters are getting destroyed. And they're not even playing a good club. And there's another walk, so it's first and second. Nobody out, top four. 866-ESPN, 866-729-3776. Seven six. I just offer this to my producer. He's a he's a monster Jets fan. Like he loves the Jets. Would you take this? 
for the rest of your working career, every paycheck, whether you're paid weekly or or biweekly, right? I mean, maybe you're paid once every two weeks. A hundred dollars is taken from your paycheck. But this year, the Jets win the Super Bowl. The Jets are vict- led, led by Christian Hackenberg. He has a dream season. Robbie Anderson, Austin Safarian Jenkins. I can't say it with a straight face, but the Jets somehow magnificently win the Super Bowl. The question for you now is you $100 out of your paycheck, every paycheck for the rest of your working career. And don't call me and be like, I'm 63. I'm only working for another 19 months. No, like an extended period of time. Maybe you're 35, 40, 45. $100 every paycheck comes out. Jets win the Super Bowl. You never have to live in a world where you say, I haven't seen that. Now, maybe if you're 60 years old, you could say that anyhow. But you know what I'm saying. And my producer, John, says, no way. I'm not giving 100 I'm not giving, if I'm paid every other week, $2,600 a year times 20 years is what, fifty two grand. i am not giving it. Oh, my God. I would, I'd give up my 401k if I meant the Giants win the Super Bowl this year. See, that, I don't understand how you wouldn't sacrifice. You wouldn't even feel that money. $100 a week? Come on. All right. People are very upset on Twitter. I told you this is a polarizing discussion. Very upset. Are you on drugs, Antoine Hayes writes? You don't think Melo's a top 30 player in the NBA? And he's clearly better than Paul George. You don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. All right. If you think so. Ravi Rogier, you have no knowledge of basketball. No respect for Melo, but have you ever? KP was helped by Melo just by being on the floor. You're crazy. All right. If you think so, if you think Carmelo Anthony is this this top player in the I, LeBron, Durant, Curry, can can we agree that those guys are better? Westbrook, Leonard, five. Harden, Kyrie, six, seven. Anthony Davis, Chris Paul, um, eight, nine. Paul George, John Wall, Damian Lillard is up to twelve. Cousins, Butler. DeRozan, Clay Thompson, Antenton Cupo, Kyle Lowry, Draymond Green, uh, Gordon Hayward, Marcus Saul, DeAndre Jordan. I take Hassan Whiteside. I, I mean, I, CJ McCollum. I think there's a lot of guys I would take over, over Carmelo Anthony. And if you're including age, uh, everybody who's 25 or under. You have Bradley Beal, Rudy Gobert. Mike Conley Jr., Devin Booker. I I think there's a big, big, big list. 866-ESPN. Chris is on ESPN Radio. What's up, Chris? Hey, man, I I heard you asking. And, uh, oh, yeah, I would most definitely, you know, let $100 come out of my paycheck for the rest of my life. I'm a Cowboys fan. Oh. Uh, I'm only 24 years old, and I'm 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 afraid I'll never see him win a Super Bowl. Oh, don't be a baby. You'll see the cow. You'll see the Cowboys win a Super Bowl at some point. They're oh. they're they're a oh. fairly functional organization. You're only 24. You'll see it at some point. So you were how old last time the Cowboys won? What they won in '95? Yeah, I was a baby, man. I was two years old. So you have no re- So you're living in a world where I say Cowboys win the Super Bowl, and you you don't have any recollection of that happening. No, at all. Uh, I mean, the best memories I have is uh, two Green Bay games, you know, 2014 and uh, this last season right here. Well, that's good. That's good. I, I, I think you're a great guy, Chris, but I, I really hope that you never see the Cowboys win a Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, I think Stephen A. would agree. Yeah, I, I know Stephen A. would agree. And thanks for the phone call. Oh. Good, Chris. You know, if nothing else, and I, not look, I'm able to find ways. Like, I have a real illness where I'm able to find things and ways about teams that I dislike and, and why. Like, the way they treated Tom Landry is unconscionable. This is a guy that was their coach for 30 years. Right? Jerry Jones takes over. Goodbye. We don't want you. See you later. Kick you out the door. Jerry Jones, Jimmy Johnson, new duo. Tom Landry, goodbye. You, you don't just don't do that. Just don't do that. Carl in New York. Carl, you're on ESPN Radio. Hey, Dave. How are you? Good. I, my day is made when I hear that Stephen A. is not in and you're subbing for him. Oh, you don't need to be mean about Stephen A. No. Just say that you're happy that well, I'm here. You're, you're a big you're fan of me. Best, 
you're the best host on this station. Thank you. And you're the most honest. I um, I feel the same way as you uh, with the Giants and Rangers. And I, uh, we're opposites in baseball. I'm a Yankee fan, and I just hate the Mets. I I would rather see a Met loss than a Yankee win. Uh, um, you're worse than me. I, I I wouldn't take that. I would take a if you say Mets win and Yankees win, or Mets lose and Yankees lose. I I would take the Mets win and the Yankees win. Yeah, I I couldn't wish anything but ill luck on the Mets. And the Cowboys, uh, that caller just now, I hope he never sees a Super Bowl. I agree. I agree. Carl, and I if, if I offered you $10,000 cash and the yeah. Cowboys win the Super Bowl this year, would you take it? No. Good. You're a good man, Carl. You've, you've got, you've got great integrity. It has to be a lot more than that. And Carmelo would not even get drafted. If you get, held a draft. You don't think so? You don't think he'd go in the top 60 teams in the NBA? Top 60 picks? Yeah. yeah maybe. I, 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 I think I think he goes, I think he goes top player. 60. Carl, thanks for the phone call and the kind words. I, I think he goes top 60. I think Carmelo Anthony is somewhere between 30 and 45. That's that's truly, that's what I believe Melo is. I'm not saying because I don't like Melo. I think Melo's fine. I think there was a time where Carmelo Anthony was a top 10 player in the league, and I think that that is not the case anymore. That doesn't make me a bad guy. I'm just giving you my honest opinion. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! Woj with some news. Dion Waiters is deciding between three teams. Among them, our local New York Knicks, the Miami Heat, and the L.A. Lakers. The thing with Waiters, he's a nice player, but he's very spotty. And he's very emotional. And when he plays, he plays. And when he doesn't, he doesn't. And, I, you know, almost like Rondo-esque, I don't know if I want to give money to a guy that I, I have to worry about. I think that's what happens with him. I think you have to worry about him consistently. By the way, and I, uh, not tongue-in-cheek or anything, Aaron Judge just hit a two-run homer. I mean, this is his 29th homer of the year. We're not at the All-Star break. We keep sitting here and waiting for him to slow down. He is so unbelievable, guys. And every single game, and, and I mentioned it yesterday, I want to get back into it real quickly. The thing that's so remarkable about Aaron Judge is that his strike zone, he never, watch him, he never swings at anything outside the strike zone. So he's 6'7", and you'd figure there'd be some kind of an area in, in his zone where you could get him. I mean, how many times have you watched a guy come into Major League Baseball, and he crushes this one to dead center? I mean, the second he hits these, you know that they're out. Uh, two run homer off of uh, off of uh, Marco Estrada. So, the, the how many times have you watched a, a young player come up and he goes on a run and he has a month where he hits three thirty and a lot of home runs and RBIs? You're like, boy, how how good is this guy, right? And then the book gets out on him, and all of a sudden he's not as good, and he slows down, and he finishes the year hitting two eighty with twenty six and eighty, and you say, oh boy, you know what a good year. But the way he started, I thought he was going to – Judge has now done this for more than three months. He now has tw- – I mean, this is a guy that's – he's going to win. Think about this for a second. And I don't think he will. But we sit here on July the 5th, and there's a chance that this man wins Rookie of the Year, MVP, and Triple Crown. Like, I wouldn't like it because I don't like the Yankees, but how cool would that be? Rookie of the Year – MVP and triple crown. I mean, he could he could, you know, never play again after this year and he would be discussed forever in baseball circles. He I, I really it's a, it's amazing that he continues to do this. And I can't wait to watch him in home run derby on Monday night. 866-ESPN 866-729-3776. Brian in Queens. Brian, you're on ESPN Radio. Hi, right, thanks for having me. You got it, Brian. So you said that uh, Carmelo Anthony is, you said, between 45 and 60? Or I, I said if you were drafting and age was an issue, yeah, I think Carmelo Anthony is probably a mid to late second round pick. Mid to late second round pick. But you see, like, you said that a lot of players is better than him. I don't know. On, I on a separate I note, I if, if, I, if I, for one year, if I had to go with guys, I would go with probably – 
25 to 30 better than Carmelo Anthony just for just for one year. Yes. 25 to 30. Yeah, that sounds about right for like one year or even two years. Because, like, I believe he's in the top 30. Okay. Look, really, but really but, but for like me to say top 30 out. or in that range, is that is that blasphemy? I, I don't think it's nah, crazy, do you? No, no, no. No, no, that's about right. Because there's a lot of players I believe there's better than him, like. Like the Jimmy Butler's and Paul George is definitely, definitely better. Oh, it's, than it's him. not close. And, and even not, though yeah, I don't love close. Demarcus Cousins in his game, he's he's better than Melo, Damian Lillard, John Wall, and these are not even the elite of the elite. These this is like that second tier level. I guys, I don't think, and you could disagree, and that's fine. And thanks for the call, I, uh, Brian. I I don't think that Carmelo Anthony's on that second tier anymore. I think your your first tier is the is the guys. You know, your first tier is the LeBrons and the Durants and the Westbrooks and the Currys and the Leonards and, and James Harden. Maybe Anthony Davis on the back end of that first tier. I think your second tier is Kyrie and Chris Paul and Paul George and Damian Lillard and, and DeMarcus Cousins and and um, and DeMar DeRozan and Clay Thompson. And then I think when you get to that third tier, you move on to, to Carmelo Anthony. And, and again, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I just think that because he's in front of us now, we overvalue Carmelo. But you can't deny the fact that, I mean, has he produced here for the Knicks? Has he produced for the Knicks? And the answer to, to, for me to that question is not, not really. Now, I'm not saying he's bad. I'm not saying you cut him. But is he the guy that so many people think that, that he is? I, I do not believe that. Mike in Staten Island. Mike, you're on ESPN Radio, buddy. Yeah, uh... I want to talk about Brzingis. Everybody's been ignoring it, but the Brzingis story, he's a restrictive free agent next summer. And the net, somebody like the Nets could offer him $150 million right. or something, or $125 million, whatever the max is. And um, the Knicks, if the Knicks would look crazy if they let him go because they don't think he's, he's worth not, it. He's not, going, he's not going anywhere. If, he's, if they – what? He's not going he's anywhere. Gonna, he's going to be a restrictive free agent. He's okay, that's fine. So he'll, they'll, they'll get offered like, huge money, like and then the Knicks will matter. match whatever he's offered. So, oh, so you, the Knicks should match $150 million if he's offered that. Yeah, you'll match you whatever really he's think, offered. You really think he's are, do you think the whole, Do you think he's really worth 150 a max deal? No, probably not, but I I, I can't let him yeah. walk away. So that, see, see, that's the problem, because people are going to be like, you You paid $150 million for Pazingas, and, you know... So the Knicks are going to be damned if they do and damned if they don't because there's going to, he's going to be a restricted free agent. and You know it's going to be a circus. I just say trade him now because it's going to be a circus. I'm not, tra- I'm not trading him. I'm building, I'm building around. And you know what my here. hopes are also? My hopes are that all this changes, that, that new regime and no mellow and a team that he's more comfortable on, that KP is not unhappy, and that we don't have to dance this dance of him even, even exploring picking up and leaving this club, Mike, and thanks for the phone call. And and you know what? If it happened, if KP was offered some kind of a max deal as a restricted free agent, I have to match it. I can't I can't let a twenty three year old stud walk away. Especially when when I can't even get a free agent to look in my direction right now. But I don't have to worry about that now because I have KP. And hopefully Neely Keen is a nice player. And maybe they have a a, a, a a top pick next year and take another nice player. And all of a sudden, in two or three years, the Knicks aren't the laughing stock of the NBA anymore. Jason Long Island. Jason, you're on ESPN Radio. Yeah, man. Uh, how, how you doing? Good, Jay. Uh, I, I just got, uh, you know, three little points I want to make. And, you know, you can just answer them slowly after I hang up. But, you know, I just heard you say that there are t- almost 30 to 40 players in the league better than Carmelo Anthony. And the reason that bothers me is because with all the young D-League players and rookies we've had, the novice loser head coaches we've had, with the exception of LeBron and Durant, remove Carmelo Anthony from that team and put one of any of the other 40 players you claim to be better 
on that team as constructed, as it's been constructed for the past three years, and you tell me which one of them is going to Which one of them? I, I don't think you get any worse with the whole number of them. I, I don't think – oh, come on. James Harden, Russell better? Westbrook, Kawhi you Leonard. You don't, you don't think they're better than Anthony Davis, Chris Paul, Paul George, John Wall? You don't think they're better with those guys? But, but what I was asking you was which one of those teams, which one of those players is single-handedly going to take the Knicks roster – as constructed right. as it has been with the loser head coaches to the playoffs. Which one of those guys? I, I, I would I would almost guarantee you that Harden and Westbrook would. Okay. I, I, I can give you that. Those are top five guys. Okay, but, but, but here's the thing. I didn't I didn't even say get me to the playoffs. Carmelo doesn't even get me close to the postseason. But 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 who is he playing with? And you know, we, you know, Christoph Porzingis is a nice player. I love Porzingis. All right, Derrick Rose, Porzingis. who I don't it's like, Porzingis. but Derrick Rose is not, is not chopped liver. He's he's a he's a serviceable point guard. All right, well, I'll tell you this. In the beginning of last season, if you would have told me that with the Knicks with Porzingis, Rose, and Melo were, were not going to make the playoffs, I would have told you you on the same stuff as Lamar Odom. That's what I would have told you. All right, so they didn't make the playoffs. Not only did not, they not make it, they didn't come close to it. And I, I, that's understandable. Now... My why is it? Why is that okay? I didn't say it was okay. Well, why is it acceptable? Why can't I blame Carmelo Anthony for part of the reason that the Knicks uh, laid an egg again last year? The re the listen. Am I saying Carmelo is without blame? Absolutely not. I'm just tired of these novice loser head coaches and the triangle being. Stuffed down everyone's throat. The man never missed the playoffs until Phil Jackson showed up. And since Phil's been there, he's been missing the playoffs, and he's been a bum. That, that's that been the narrative. Like, that, that's what I've seen. And I'm objective. I didn't even want Carmelo Anthony to come to New York. All right, let, let me break honest. it down for you, Jason. And thanks for the call. It's a good call. Do I think that he gets help from from the front office? No, not. Let, I don't think Phil Jackson or Hornacek or any of these guys did him any favors. None. Do I think that part of the responsibility clearly falls on the shoulders of Carmelo Anthony? Absolutely. Look at what Russell West. You're gonna. I mean, does Carmelo? Here's the thing. Does he make this team better? Like, how many more games do you think they win because of this guy? Look at Russell Westbrook. You take him off that team, they're they're nowhere near the postseason. James Harden. They're nowhere near the same kind of team. Forget about LeBron and Curry and those guys. I don't think that Carmelo Anthony really makes this Knicks club much better. And I'm willing to trade him to be bad, to have a big pick, to try and turn the page, to move forward in the future. You don't agree? You don't have to agree. It's my opinion. You're listening to Love Advice with Leanne. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, hi, Leanne. Long-time listener, first-time caller. <laughs> Why, in your professional opinion, do you never take my calls off the air? Is this Carl? Yep, it's Carl. I mean, we had a few dates. Everything was great, I thought. Uh... Well, you know, when you switch to GEICO, you could save a lot of money on car insurance. Okay, awesome. You should call them. I will. GEICO, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! Yankees uh, afternoon game up at the stadium. Trailed 5 nothing. Aaron Judge... 3.30, two-run homer, by the way, from Judge to make it 5-2. 3.30, 29, and 65. Again, and I think this is worthy of all the discussion in the world. Forget about Triple Crown. This guy could go Rookie of the Year, MVP, Triple Crown. I mean, this would be... Th drop Mike, you don't ever have to have a conversation again. How could anybody ever have a better year than that? How can you? You can't, is the answer. And I don't enjoy it because it's the Yankees, but there's something special about what's going on with this kid right now. And you know what's funny? Do you remember coming out of spring training? It was like, will he, won't he? Is he going to make the club? Is he ready for the big leagues? Like, it just shows you as much as goes into these decisions, the amount of money and the staff and the scouting and everything. It was like flip of the coin. Does Aaron Judge make it up with the big club? Remember, Greg Bird was supposed to be a sensation. Aaron Judge, we're not really sure. Greg Bird may not play again this year. Aaron Judge is having a year for the ages. Re it really is unbelievable. 866-ESPN. Mike in Yorktown. Mike, you're on ESPN Radio, buddy. 
Hey, how you doing? Thanks for taking my phone call. You got it, Mike. Um, I spoke to you a couple weeks ago on a Friday, and I spurred that conversation where you guys went through all the NFL quarterbacks um, and what round they were drafted in. I don't know if you recall. Uh, I vaguely do, yes. Okay, but um, I wanted to talk about how you said $100 out of my paycheck to see the Jets win the Super Bowl. Would you do and, it? Um, I wouldn't do it. I, I'm a season ticket holder. I'm spending all this money to go tailgating, all this money at the stadium um, to get there, PSLs, parking tickets, um, not parking tickets, parking passes, should I say, apparel. I, I gave up on apparel. I just wear my Keyshawn jersey now. But I'm putting all this money in, and this is a product that I've been seeing all, all these years. And now I'm going to give $100 on top of that every week. So, Mike, how much money do you think you're spending on, per year on the Jets? Per year? Yeah. Um, give or take a, a little bit over a grand or two. No, that's it? Yeah. I mean, for for tickets, our, for parking, for tailgating, $1,000? Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I was really just going with the tailgating because we have everything solidified. But... Um, Three grand? Four grand? I would say about five grand a year. All right, so I'm offering you a – I mean, how important – and I'm being serious now. How important is it for you to see them win the Super Bowl? It's one of the most important things that I have. I mean, my dad and I – it's one of the things that we share since I was a child. So All right, so I'm offering you – I'm offering you, Mike, a super – a Vince Lombardi trophy. And you only have to take out $100 from your paycheck for the rest of your working career. You wouldn't do it. I, I, I really would want to say that I, I would, but the other side of me is like I, I've been putting all this money in for the Jets already, and what have they given me back? So now I'm going to give an additional hundred dollars a week to see them finally win one Super Bowl with Hackenberg, Robbie Anderson, and a bunch of a bunch of nobodies. I, I want to see the Jets win a Super Bowl like a lot of these teams do by building from the draft. All right. I'm offering it to you. You're, you're not taking it. Thanks for the call, Mike. I would take it. Uh, I'm not worried about how I'm building. All I want is one if I was a Jets fan. Give me one. Like the Rangers, remember when they were on in 94? Now I can die in peace. They haven't won in 50 years. What do you care how you win? Just win one. By the way, Yankees with a long two-run homer, their new first baseman just crushed one. They're now trailing 5-4. Important for the Yankees to come back and, and win this one. G-Man Choi with the uh, home run for the Yankees. All right, Dave in Jersey, you're on ESPN Radio. How's it going? What's up? Um, I want to combine two of your topics on some level. Uh, first of all, I have no problem with the tennis player um, not caring. How? how? I'll explain how. Uh, when Mark Bolger said the same thing, I thought that was very disappointing because it's a job, but he's a job on a team. He's an individual. This individual wants to go about his life doing what he does. I don't look at his job and his life is, oh, I would aspire to that because there's a lot of other jobs. I would love to, you know, be a partner in a hedge fund for a day. You know, there's a lot of things, and that's still work. And to this guy, it's work. And a lot of these guys get into sports at a young age, and they're burned out. And it's not, it's not ruining a team. He's an individual. So I don't really have an issue with his thing. But he, he, he doesn't gets, care. He, does, if he, I, you know what? he doesn't care if he loses fur. He doesn't care if he plays hard. He doesn't care if people are paying to watch him play and he lays doesn't an matter. egg. He doesn't care about anything. I hear you, but it doesn't matter to me. Okay. It's the same way a guy who runs a hedge fund may hate his job. All right, real so quickly, because i got to run in a right. second. So it doesn't here's, matter here's to you. It doesn't matter Carmelo. to me. What's your next one? Here's the point about Carmelo. Carmelo, in the ESPN article, front page a couple of years ago, he basically said he didn't care. He basically was concerned with marketing his life. He had basically thrown up his hand at this but point. He, but he did, you know what the difference knows? is, Dave? He didn't come out and say, I don't care. And that's a difference. Yes, he has other interests, and thanks for the call. He wants to market himself. He wants business opportunities. He wants all those things. But I truly believe he cares. Toma just saying, I don't care. I don't care if I win. I don't care if I lose. All right, guys, enjoy the day. I'll be back tomorrow in for Stephen A. right here on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 80 and the ESPN app.